is in Japan. It's a typical crossing of a street where you see many people moving around. In the future, there will be people and robots that move around and do interaction and collaboration. But you, you have to think that the future will be robots with humans and robots helping motion and doing tasks together with humans. Okay, you can see here very few examples of what we have, we are expecting to have in the future. There will be robots helping elderly people. Think about that around 30% of the population in at least in the developed countries will be people over 65 years old. And that means that will be appear a lot of, of this kind of help. Carry baggage or doing things together with uh, children or go shopping or many, many other tasks. And it's only very typical daily, daily, daily uh, task. But in the future, robots and humans work, will work together. Okay, we have been working in this in this task in different uh, uh, in in this uh, human robot uh, interaction and cooperation in different tasks. And you can see some of them. We have been working in accompaniment, approaching, searching together of a lost object or, or, or an object that has been hided in handover task in human object human robot object transportation, in harvesting and pruning, and now we are working in telepresence. Okay, the, this last two, harvesting and pruning in telepresence, of tasks that we are in the European project, and that is a Japanese avatar moonshot project. Okay, let's see what happened in the human, typical human robot collaborative or cooperative task. And this is a task that you have already seen that was Javier Laplaza yesterday explained about uh, his work and his PhD work on that. And But take a look on this. In this task, that is a very simple one, that is giving an object, a person, in this case a robot, give an object to a person. And we have, we can uh, divide this in four different phases. The first one, it is the robot and the human are far away and they are approaching. Why I'm talking about far away, they are 60 meters, for example, 70 meters, and then they have to approach. And uh, the person is walking, the robot is moving, and then the, it arrives one position, then the human starts to, uh, or close to the, the, the other agent, in this case the robot, and start to up his hand in order to give uh, or to pick up, in this case, to pick up the object. And the robot is doing also the same, is, is uh, levering the, the arm in order to give the object. And then we arrive to the contact. The, the contact is the person pick up the object and the robot release the object. And then the last one is the release when actually the person has the object, the robot has not the object, and then they move away. Okay, that is a typical situation, a very simple task. Well, very simple for humans, not so simple for robots. But then, what happened? Okay, uh, when we do, when we want to do this task, typically in robotics, we use a paradigm that has been used for many, many years. That is what is called perception action paradigm. The perception action means that the robot perceive what is around and act. But what happened when we do collaborative task? Then in this case, three different situations can happen. Okay, the first one is the human and robot follows a collaborative task. That means both wants to uh, do this operation of the robot is going to give an object and the human is going to pick up the object. Okay, that is the typical one that we're looking for. However, what happened and typically happened with humans when we do this kind of task together, humans, a human or robot for a short period of time doesn't follow a collaborative task. Why? Because, for example, the human, someone has called and then is uh, before he's going to approach and pick up the object, then he tries to pick up the phone, the mobile phone, 
and then is not doing the collaborative task. There is a typical situation that could be another is the person uh, ups the hand in order to touch the, the nose or whatever, uh, typically before is completing the task. And, or, for example, also can happen that the human or the robot decides not to follow that collaborative task. Okay, these situations are typically in a human robot uh, collaborative task. And it happens many, many times. For example, let's see another example. Typically, there is two children or playing with a ball. And one is going to send the ball to the other. Okay, that is typically something that is going to be happen, but the one of the child decides not to uh, give the or throw the ball and maintains the ball itself. And then what is what is going to do the other ch uh, child? What is going to do? Is going to try to stop and not do anything? Is going to ask why don't give me the ball? Or is going to go to pick up the ball? Take a look that there is this kind of typical things it happens very often and that has to be handled by the robot the robot has to understand what is gonna the person is gonna do and then modify his behavior depending on what the human is doing okay and then typically when when we do that we need something else we need to know the, the other agent intention. In typically uh, perception action, that is what is done. The agent one, for example, the robot perceive what is going around, and that is what is called situation awareness, understand what is what is happening in this situation. The ball is gonna be the, the ball is the other agent has the ball. I want I am expecting that this is gonna give me the ball. And I will do, I will move through the picking up the ball. And that is what is going to be in principle doing and in order to do the action. And the, the, the other agent, the, the person that in this case has the ball, is also doing the situational awareness, understand that the other is waiting that to give, give it the object and it makes the decision to walk through and do the action. But when the person, one of the agent, uh, I'm talking about agent, agent could be a person, could be the robot, change his mind and, for example, doesn't follow the collaborative task or wants to go against, then the other agent, agent one, has to understand the intention of agent two in order to understand what is going to be the situation, what is the, is being at that moment the situation because he's looking the, the other person and understand that he's not going to give the ball. And then they have to make a decision, a different decision, if he's doing a typically collaborative task or it's going to be a situation that the other agent is not moving, is not doing anything, and then has to think what, what do I have to do, what do I have to change. Or if the other is going against the collaborative action, I have to do a completely different action. Okay. Then you can see that actually every agent has to understand the intention of the other agent. Okay, and this is what we call uh, then the in the cycle perception action we have to change to the cycle or paradigm perception intention action. Say so you perceive, you understand the intention of the other, and then you can elaborate your plan and do it together. The, the joint plan. Okay, for example, intention, how we get the intention of the human could be that the, it is given explicit and the person tell us, I don't know, I don't gonna give you the, the ball, I don't gonna follow this collaborative task, for example, or could be I make some sounds, or some gestures, signals, or others. that is typically explicit intention but could be that the human is not doing anything. It's showing by this body or the, the gaze of the motion of the body or the trajectory that is followed or the face expression or whatever, it can show his intention. 
And that has to be uh, understand or inferred by the robot. Okay, that is what gives us this, what we call versation intention action paradigm for human robot interaction and cooperation. And you can see here the, the, the complete view, this agent one and agent two. Agent one and agent two has both the same block, the, the same blocks. First, perception intention, situation awareness, and decision making. Both has the same. But when they really do, they finally get a joint plan, they do the cooperative action and they change the world. And then again, it comes to this cycle for each one of the agents. And take a look at the agent. Agent one, perceive and also understand the intention of agent two. And these two is used to understand our current situation and also propagate in the future what is going to happen. For example, in the motion of the Hanover task, when the robot then, uh, has the object is moving the hand toward the human, it takes a look of the skeleton of the human and see how the person is moving the, the arm in order to approach to pick up the object. That, that is the future situation pro projection. And then when they have this, it is, and then they can actually uh, take the role of, for example, in this case will be the giver and the other is going to be the receiver and will do his plan, his own plan for agent one and agent two. But once they have the or orange, they have to agree with that. Or otherwise, they have to negotiate the plan. And that is done in real time. And that has to be done always when that happening. That is what in our relation with humans, human by human, we are doing this kind of task every time. Then we have to do the same with robots. OK, that is the, the, the what is happening. OK, intention not only influence the situation awareness, but also influence the negotiation. Depending on the intention of the, of the other agent, the, the negotiation is going to change. The negotiation is how we're going to negotiate that plan together. OK, then in our case, the examples that I am showing are very simple uh, examples of Hanover or approaching or a company or searching together. In other cases, very complex. But uh, in all the cases, this is a kind of issue. OK, this, this paradigm that we started many years ago, but actually we explicitly uh, um, write the first articles. It was last year that we started to publish these kind of articles. We have now uh, going into a new project that is called, it's a moonshot project in Japan, like um, uh, moonshot is uh, to, to shot the, the moon. And it's a project of 10 years of then, in this case, we are joining, has joined to the Avatar Symbiotic Society. Then there is an avatar. Avatar is actually a, a robot. Then behind the robot, there is a person. You have seen probably the film of Avatars when there is a person that put in a, in, in a, in a bed or with sensor eyes and they can move uh, an avatar outside in another world. That is something that is going to happen in the future. Uh, that this kind of uh, robots will be able to have a human behind always, but this robot can operate by itself completely autonomous or can be completely operated by the human or can be a mix of operation. Okay, But we are going to incorporate this kind of intention to this kind of uh, robot avatars. Okay, let's go into see this cycle of perception intentions uh, cycle in, in different tasks than I have shown before. Okay, in this case, we have to uh, observe the implicit or the explicit intention and use that to understand the situation and make prediction of what is going to happen, what is going to do the other agent. Okay, in this case, we're all, always talking about one agent is a robot, the other agent is the human. And we want to do this kind of cooperation and the robot has to understand what is in the human mind that he cannot know that, but looking the motion of the body or the gestures or whatever, he can interpret what is can happen and then make future 
projections of what is going to happen. And then with that, is we will be able to do the collaborative task and collaborative plans. Okay. And with that, it will be able first to know which role is going to take one of the agents. For example, it's going to be collaborative, it's going to be leader, and the other is going to be the follower. That is typically when you bring a table with two humans and then you want, uh, and, and then you, you, your sensor or basically the four sensors, the, the pick up and the table and you're pushing or you're uh, leaving that the other is uh, leading the motion and you lead, you lead, you only, your force is only to maintain the table over the, the ground in order not to touch and be able to move around, okay? That is typically kind of leader follower. Could be neutral there, or could be adversary that you go against. But then the plans, what is the plans? The plan is the plan that actually allowed to do this task together. For example, in the, the, this bringing together the table between the two agents, then you have a plan to go from one position to another, and then you know that you have to pass through a door, and then you have a trajectory that you know how to do, and it will be one of the person will be uh, going uh, first, and the other is going to be behind, and then uh, afterwards you will put in a position that both are going to be in the same in, uh, in, 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 in vertical. I am sorry, in, in, in perpendicular to the trajectory, wh whatever. But also you can have a plan that is adaptive. You adapt to the others, or you can anticipate. You can anticipate what is going to happen, and and move before the the the, the action is going to be done, or you be, can be proactive. For example, in the case of the two child two children, then um, one is not going to give the ball. The other take a proactive action of trying to pick up the ball of the of the, the other agent. Okay, that is typically this is a kind of things that is can, can happen. Okay, let's going to see what kind of uh, blocks, what is called um, cooperative AI. AI is artificial intelligence blocks, or typically in this kind of task. Well, first perception, in order to recognize the environment, the objects, what is going around. Uh, you see here in effect objects and people and track motion of people and objects. Could we also then you do cooperative perception that in this case you have different sensors. There is the, the computer science faculty in the UPC and you have two robots that are looking uh, around a person and then they share like different views. There is a camera, there is the camera of the one robot, there is a camera of the other robot. That is what we did in a European project that was called Urban Network and Robotics. And we were we did this kind of actions. Okay. Okay, we have also communication. We have a, a, we can have a dialogue through a speech, text, visual. We can have a non-verbal dialogue. Nonverbal dialogue is by looking the motion of the body of the other agent, or by looking the face, or by looking the gestures, you can, you can have a dialogue. And actually, we do many times. In our typically, uh, when two agents or, or two humans are talking together, most of the uh, speech is not verbal. Some people say that is 80% uh, non-verbal, 20% verbal. Depends on the kind of conversation. Eh? But that is typically. And could be also implicit communication. Implicit communication, that means that, for example, you have, you have two robots here, what, and then there's a sensor in the middle, and then you're looking by the force, you're communicating what is your action. Okay. What else? Situation awareness. That is typically... That is an example that was shown by Javier. That is uh, the, the prediction, future prediction of what the human is going to do. And you see this avatar in the middle. And actually, it is uh, has moved bef before because it was the action that I was expecting to do this human. Okay, And you can have the first is the understand the, the current situation, understanding, but you have to make a short term future prediction and you can see here this is a short term future prediction and now it's not moving because the person is moving now it's moving and then 
the prediction is what is going to happen before and then this is what the robot has to understand is going to happen or could be long-term future prediction okay okay what else and also and finally they have to make the decision decision is through reasoning what is the situation reason about the resonation the situation planning what is going to be done for example the what is going to be the trajectory in this case this robot is going to do is going to can be can have different trajectories and finally decides to go in this one we will see a little later what are more things oh also the typically operation in decision making is negotiation negotiate in between the agents in order to decide what is the more appropriate action that has to be done Finally, there is the interaction and action. There could be social interaction with following the social norms, rules. Then actually, that depends on the cultures. Different countries has different cultures. For example, now in this avatar society uh, project, uh, we are working with so avatar symbiotic society. We are working in Japanese and we are working in Europe. And then we are exchange uh, experiment, the same experiment done in Japan, done in, in, in Spain, and see what are the difference, okay? And understand the cultural difference uh, because this information has to be all also included in the robot in order to do the appropriate plans and actions. Okay, we can have social interaction, we can have physical interaction, physical is in contact or interaction or typically generic human-robot interaction, whatever it is. Okay, let's see where our experiment settings, and we have here in the UPC a large experimental setting that is a, is a, a short area, or well, a short area in the campus north of the UPC in Barcelona, where here is the computer science faculty, and in this area, we have put cameras, we have put a special Wi-Fi, and we do many of our experiments here. That, that is like a small urban area, then we can realize what is going, what's happening, when the people is moving, when the road we want to approach, when we are looking for something new, etc. And you can see here, this is our vintage robot that was TV and Davo that we did a lot of experiments, you will see probably these ones. You can see the maps here. We can know where is, we are lo localizing always the robot. We are trying to localize the humans, and, and then we do this kind of task together. Uh, OK, for example, in the TV, and in, in Dabo, there are a couple of robots that have this kind of sensor, GPS, stereo camera, tactile, vertical leader, horizontal. Now, all these leader has only 3D leader before it was 2D leaders, and we have also the encoder for navigation. And now the, the new robot that we have this uh, IBO that has also force and torque and has other sensors included in this robot. Okay. Okay, let's go in now to a specific examples, then we will see this uh, paradigm of intention prediction and, and, and action, in this case, also anticipation. And this is an accompaniment and approaching task. And you can see here, there is a robot that has to accompany one or two people, and uh, it has to reach one goal. This is the goal that has, they both has to reach, all together has to reach this goal. But could be that in the middle there are humans that traverse the trajectory, and they have to change the trajectory to go. And then this robot has to take in account that has always to accompany these two persons, or one person or two persons, it has to always to maintain some distance, close distance to each one of them, uh, some angle, because could be that they are, the robot is behind, or could be that the robot is in front, or could be that the robot is just at the same line of the two persons that is a company. And also, they have to try to reach the goal, but could be that the person, one of two, it tries to go in another direction. And then what it has to do the robot? OK, let's see. Then the robot has to understand the intention, emotion, prediction of the person to be a company. But at the same time, it has to see the intention of motion and prediction of the bystander. This is a bystander that is crossing on, on them. And then with that, has to compute which is 
which are the different trajectory that has to follow and select one of these. For example, that could be that this is the selection because this selection means then when it's moving here, this person is moving in this and then it will be able to pass without uh, colliding with this person. Okay. Okay, then uh, you see that in this case, the robot has to adapt his motion plan and taking into account that he has to adapt, but also has to maintain the distance and the angle with the one or two person that are accompanied. And has also to anticipate the motion of the bystanders, one or several bystanders. Okay. And then what happened? What we have? We have in that block, we have the robot agent with the robot sensors, and this has to uh, understand the inputs or the, the human agent uh, and understand the implicit intention or the explicit intention, and also from the pedestrian also to have the implicit or explicit intention of them. And then from this one, give this information in order that the block of situation awareness understand what is the situation that we are at that moment and also make the future situation prediction. And for this, for example, we're doing many things. Uh, you will see the plan that we are doing. But we use one, uh, one formulation that is called social force model that, is, that for us is easy to use and easy to understand for the humans. And in this case, this formulation that you will see later on, uh, use like, um, uh, forces uh, in order to compute the force that has to apply to the robot. That is the force, the force in this case is the acceleration that has to do the robot or the velocity, the angular and, and linear velocity that has to take the robot, but is compute through the force that is the force of attraction to the goal and the forces of repulsion. You will see that later, okay? And there are different kinds of forces. And with that, we will be able to, to know, to uh, modelize our current situation. And also, we are able to, with, with that, that is information that will go to the decision making, that will make, create the collaborative roles and collaborative plans. And at the same time, we are projecting, trying to predict what is going to happen with our, in this case, is the company men. Okay, and then what is going to happen with the person that we are accompanying, but also with the pedestrian, the bystanders, the, what they are going to do. And with all of them, we are able to, I'm sorry, we are able to understand the human intention, the situation prediction, and from this, create our plan. That could be an, the plan to follow, or could be an anticipative plan, or an adaptive plan. And finally, that will be the actions that will be uh, that has to do the robot. In our case, the robot is only to give these accelerations, pass to velocities, and actually is to give what is going to be the next uh, the angular velocity and linear velocity. That they actually are the inputs of the robotic platform. And you can see here an example. There is two persons that are accompanied by the robot, and here is one robot that is approaching the person and try to 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 a situation that can start to talk with them. Okay. 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 In order to do this, I will very briefly explain how, what is our human aware navigation. Human aware navigation means that a robot takes into account the, the person in order to avoid to bother them and try to reach the goal without uh, we, uh, taking always the action itself, for example, reducing the velocity, changes the, 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 the trajectory, or changes the speed in order to then reduce the bothering of the other people, but finally gets our, his goal that needs to arrive to the, to the appropriate place. Okay, in this case, you have, you can see here, the human motion prediction, the robot has to do the human motion prediction of the pedestrian and also of the people that has to accompany, and then create finally the, the, the trajectory that has to follow. And for that, we use this kind of social force model that, I, I repeat, is a superposition of forces. That is the final force that is going to be applied to the robot. That is the attraction to the goal. This is the destination where the robot has to go. And that are the forces that imply repulsion 
for example, an, an obstacle is going to repulse the robot outside, or a person that is approaching is going to repulse the robot itself. And in this case, for example, the steering force, that is the, the force to the goal, it is computed by the velocity of the expected velocity with respect to the real velocity of the robot, and that is the, the attractor force. And the repulsor, is, for example, there is a typical repulsive force from the obstacles of the person. In the person case, we have to also to include the velocity of any object that is moving. We have to include the velocity. There is more complex force. But finally, there is the final force that you have. And, and there is the, the final, the, the attractor plus the repulsor, repulsor forces. OK. Uh, also, we have uh, what we call anticipative robot navigation. Then the robot tries to anticipate what is going to happen with the motion of humans or any other object. Could be a bicycle, could be a motorcycle, could be a vehicle, and it has to anticipate what is going to happen. And in this case, what we did is to use something like uh, like a tornado. You know that tornado has in the the basement has a not very large uh, circle and then it's going increasing when you go up okay that is what we do for pre for uh, trying to know where the person the pedestrian or the bicycle of the car is going to be in the future in order to compute what is going to be our trajectory because our trajectory has to be in a way that don't do not collide with the humans or the, or the motion objects, bicycles, cars, or whatever, it has to go through them, try to uh, find, arrive to the goal without colliding with any of them and try to, to look for the best trajectory to reach that. Okay, that is the uh, typical uh, uh, algorithm that we use for doing that, uh, where we plan to an horizon edge that is, for example, five meters because or the people goes usually for one meter per second, okay? And, and then uh, what are the, the prior requirements, the global plan, we have to know the map, et cetera. And then we can anticipate, predict what is the, anticipate the, well, first, I'm sorry, predict the motion of the, the, the people, uh, the pedestrians, and then in order to know what are the trajectory that they're gonna follow and then compute our plans. And you can see here the typical uh, planners components. There is a simulator and in order to see that. You can see the robot. You can see this is the horizon. The horizon is this black circle. This is the destination. And, and actually, these are the different plans that are always, every 100 milliseconds, is computing a new plan. But it's, it's trying to generate many plans and finally decides to take the best one. Which one? You will see that what we do. and this the, what you see here are these tornadoes that are the people moving and it's producing in the future what is going to be, and actually this uh, the 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 decision of taking which is the the best uh, plan it is like to have the tornado in the basement has the I'm sorry has the uh, in the basement has the time zero and at the top you have time five seconds. Uh, for example, that is, means that the robot has moved five meters ahead. Okay, that is an example of a kind of experiment that we did some years ago, and you can see here the robot moving, and what is changing is velocity because these are the, vert the vortex uh, of the tornadoes of each one of the person when they are moving, and, and the robot the, the the robot is planning the new trajectory taking into account the motion of the human and also that's clear all the objects that they have around it. okay well with that we, we, we were able to uh, do the best trajectory in our in in our case and decide what you can see here changes the velocity changes the orientation uh, and this is done in real time although that you can see them in this case because the computer that we use uh, or these experiments were not very fast ones, but then you can go, you can see this can be done not very fast. However, with the new computer the GPUs, we are doing that in very fast motion. Okay, okay. 
we are doing this. Uh, that is the example of the case of the navigation. But we are doing this for uh, a company uh, person. No? And you can see here there is a robot and the person. Then they have to be a company, but they have to pass through these obstacles. You have these static obstacles. That means that actually in this, if they take this trajectory, they can maintain the uh, side by side configuration but if they are going in here there is narrow place or the road of the person has to be ahead in order that they can pass this no finally they have to reach the the goal that are and that are the different path that has to be computed and decided which is the best however could be that in this operation the person decides to do another thing then the road has to follow this uh, decision. For example, this is the adaptive social planner that we use for doing all this operation. And here uh, we to predict what is the future of the destination of all the agents and or pedestrian, whatever. And then uh, the extended social force model that we have, we predict what is the future path, not only of the pedestrian, but also the person that has to be a company. And at the same time, we are localizing the robot itself. And we do this planning robot behavior, then in this case, we use RRT as a, a typical uh, planner uh, for because it's very fast. And, and we do this extended social force model and we compute multiple paths. And then we try to select the best path and, and all adapt with respect to the uh, motion of the human. And these are the different aspects. And the planner has for all of the path that can be done, then we we compute in each one of them, which is the force that has to do the robot. And then from all of them, using different uh, multi uh, cost function with different cost functions that computes how much does it cost to move in this, taking this trajectory, or what is the, um, what is the possibility of collision or whatever, we decide which of all of these which is the best path for example the best path could be this one okay okay and you can see here the example of uh, for one person and there are the different forces and you can see here the example uh, and, the, and these tornadoes and we are computing all of them you can see here uh, in this case a company the robot is an is a drone then it's a company, a person. Then in this case, instead of computing that directly, we have uh, learned, we, we learn uh, with a neural net using these forces and what are the resultant, resultant accelerations and also what is the human prediction, position prediction. And with that, we are able <clears throat> and did this in simulation. And, and you can see how the, the robot changes depending on the obstacles its position in order to pass. Uh, and in real life, you can see here, um, moving the person and the robot, and there is an obstacle, and the robot tries to maintain some distance to the person and do, uh, and do the accompaniment. OK, in, in case of two persons, we have something similar. And, and you can see here very shortly, look, take a look on this. This is a company, one person. Take a look what happened here. This person does that, and the robot, OK, maintains, uh, doesn't bother, and it continues with the position, OK, with the motion of that. OK, now let's going to see that for Hanover operation. Actually, you, you was Javier Laplaza show uh, yesterday about it. I'm going to only show that actually here, this again, we have the robot has to understand the intention and motion prediction of the 3D skeleton and and do anticipate or adapt or follow the pre-established uh, plan and actually it's something similar as before then we have to we have the human agent the robot has to understand the implicit intention or the explicit intention and you can see here the implicit intention is directly obtained through this robot sensor but the explicit one is got directly to the collaborative plan it doesn't follow this track but directly go to the collaborative plan that is dependent of the kind of action that are doing. And you can see this is, you, you saw that already, 
and I go, I don't gonna repeat that and you have seen already. We did also the same for object transportation. And in this case, instead of being a distance, there is a bar that both has to maintain the robot and the human. And very similar. We have to adapt the trajectory depending, in this case, the, the sensor is a, a, a force sensor that is here in the wrist of the robot and the human move the bar and depending how we push the bar then the robot knows what is the intention of the person to continue to try to go right left stop whatever and actually very similar as before but with different uh, the current situation is different and uh, the modelized modelization is different as before than before and uh, we we can here we mix together real forces than the force that actually push the person with virtual forces taking for the social force model. We combine both because the social force model gives us the information about what is thinking or what is not thinking, but actually in, 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 a, in the uh, subconscious is doing the person and, and the robot knows from this, with this information what is happening and also directly the force that is adjusting the person uh, pushing the bar and with the sensor we can understand what is going and you can see here uh, this kind of motion we did many experiments in different situations when they are collaborating when they are not collaborating we can we have predictors that predicts what is the force that is going to adjust the person in the future what is the motion of the person in the future and then the robot can decide what is going to do in the following Something similar, it is in collaborative session for an object. That is a very special case. That is a case that we have a robot and a person, and both they have to look an object that is in some place, in this case, in a very large area that is 60 meters by 40 meters with, with columns in, in an open area. And then we want to know, we want both they have to look for an object that they don't know what it is, they know the map, and, but they have to do exploration uh, each other. They say they have the person has to do their own exploration and the robot has to do their own exploration. And in this case, this is this large area that is in the, where we, we did this experiment. And, and we use, we, we prepare a special interface that is a mobile phone where we put the map and where we, you can see the position of the human, the position of the robot and the plan that the robot is going to do and what the human is going to do and that is is given directly by the robot in this case you can see this is the the, the interface where uh, you can the person can, can uh, specify his position the robot goal what is what and doing replanning and the robot can calculate the robot position the robot path and the human expected path all of this is done through this interface, okay? And this is the, our uh, model, what we use, the robot agent, the human agent. And here there is uh, the planner, that is a Monte Carlo collaborative research plan. Then we compute the plan of the human and the plan of the robot at the same time. And we, and in, in, in this way, the robot knows what is gonna do as a robot and what the person is expected to do. And they are putting together in, in order to evaluate that, that what is happening. And actually with that, uh, there is a process, for example, there is, a, there is an area that there are different rooms and there is the, what the, the robot sees and what the human sees, and they are looking for an object and they don't know what it is. The clear areas is this, the area that are, has been already visited or seen by the sensors and the, these purple areas or the areas that has not been explored yet. And then when the walls are moving, then they are seeing these areas are uh, really visited. And finally, it's expected that one of the agents, the robot or the human, find the object. Okay. And there are different elements. Uh, and we use in this case, uh, rewards and we try to uh, uh, optimize a function that is a reward function. 
uh, using uh, agent reward, environment reward, that reward, and interaction reward. And, and this is an example. I will go faster of this one. Uh, that is what you see here. It is, I say, the purple is the area that has not visited. The, the clear it, uh, the gray one is the part that has been visited by one of the other agents. Okay, there is the the what is seen in the interface and what both share the human and, and robot shares through this interface. What each one is gonna do, and the robot propose that the, the human goes to some position or the the person uh, can say then what he wants to go and when the robots has to go. And there is a negotiation, in this case, a very short negotiation, but they can do that. And finally, uh, in this case, they find the object uh, in the object or these small pieces that cannot be seen here clearly. We did the same inside of the um, inside of uh, the faculty of mathematics we did exactly the same experiments and in order to find an object and you can see the robot and the human this is the human that is doing it. what is the robot doing okay alberto we have a question uh in the chat yes uh okay i don't know if i i'm gonna finish now and then i answer the question okay, okay, okay. go ahead yeah Okay, finally, I'm going to explain the harvesting and pruning. This is this, um, we're doing a collaborative project, a European project, where we have to harvest and pruning, uh, harvest table grapes, that are these grapes, but not uh, in, a, in a pergola, and, and also to do harvesting by a, a robot that has uh, arms, two arms, and has a, a caterpillar. We use very similar focus and you can see here the detection of the of these uh, the, the bunches and the peduncles and the robot has to pick up uh, the peduncle and cut the peduncle and uh, you can see here the human robot interaction things and on the top here you can uh, i hope so you're okay you can see the motion of the human and the skeleton of the human in this case and you can see here, we are detecting the position of the hand of the person. And we use that for doing operation, inform the, the robot where is the hand, where is the position, where the, the robot has to cut or pick up uh, a bunch. And uh, you can see this operation here, um, where there is a mix together between the human collaborates and says what the robot has to go or the robot by itself can do this kind of operation and and you can see here the robot is uh the the human in this case the, the, in the, at the beginning is showing where by the hand where the robot has to go and the robot what it does is detecting the hand and detecting the position of the hand you can see here in the in the the in the bottom part <clears throat> with that and then it computes where to go and can go that that will be a collaboration between human and robot or could be done the robot do that by itself and in this case it detects the the grapes the bunches and detects the peduncles and then in in the case uh, by itself can compute and recognize where are the where, where is the peduncle obtain the position and then give this information to the robot arm in order to uh, well, first to the robot platform in order to move and then to the robot arm to go to to pick up the object that is is uh, as you shown here very slowly you know then you see all the uh, the steps and then the robot can go and pick up the object okay uh, that is example thank you and i go now to answer your questions i'm sorry that i didn't do before but i wanted to to show that okay uh, let me see. Uh, okay. Okay. The question was: best path for human means reaches the goal in the shortest path, avoiding obstacles. Another question for research task with mobile robots: which app use for sharing map on phone? 
Okay, okay. Let's let's start by the first one. The best path for the human robot means reach the goal, the shortest path. No, in this case, it's an exploration. Uh, in the searching, it is an exploration, and that means that they don't know what is the object. Uh, what what is the object? And then they have to explore uh, the area in a way that they have to do. Um, that means in the shorter path, uh, explore the maximum area because they know that they have each one agent has their own uh, perception sensors. The robot has, for example, the cameras and the leader, and the human has their own sensors. The robot doesn't know the own sensor, but has a prediction of more or less what the human can see. And with this information, the robot tries to uh, look the best path for the robot itself and for the human itself in order to uh, seize the, the, the greatest area where the object can be. That is how uh, it's doing the, the, the best path. Okay, And then the, it gives this information, these two paths, the path that the robot is, has uh, planned to go, and also what the human, the robot thinks what the human has to do in order to be much more efficient. And that sends to the uh, human. And the human can decide to continue the plan or replan and say, no, I don't going to do that. I'm going to go to this position. And then the robot has to again to recompute where is going to be his path, where is going to be the path of the human, in order to share the minimum area in order to be efficient, in order to explore all the area. Okay, that is, uh, I think. And that's clear that uh, they have to avoid obstacles always because there is a map. And also, there could be there is human moving or bicycle or whatever. Okay, I know that that is question about the research task with mobile robot, which app? Okay, in this case, we use an app was developed by uh, I think by uh, Google. They develop one app, but that was very old. And now we are not using that. We are using a web, uh, using typical web tools that has already rows, and that's. Uh, improve our working. But before, in that case, we use a specific app developed by Google. Um, it is open source. Yes, it, it is open source. But that one, it is really not new. One. Okay. What is the name of the small robot that was used in the search for task? Okay, that is a pioneer robot that is a typical, uh, very, I mean, that is a vintage robot. That is still, I don't know if they are selling, that is, it's called pioneer. Okay. Uh, if there is any project or work involving exchange of forces, um, for instance, collaborative transportation, yes, we are doing this kind of collaborative transportation. We continue doing experiments. Actually, today, we are doing this kind of experiments, uh, transporting a small, uh, a small object, very light objects, because uh, our robot cannot, can only bring up to two kilos. And that means that we can bring a very small object. But yes, we are doing that. Uh, do you use frontier algorithm for exploration? Yes, we use different kind of uh, algorithms. One is typically the frontier one, but we use other ones that actually has an utility uh, uh, utility function that it tries to, uh, because this is a collaborative, uh, you have to uh, try to not repeat the same area, OK? Uh, why we use force sensing model in nature apart from the other model? Because uh, we want to know what is the person wants to do. I say in this case there is a bar, and the person wants using these forces can decide to change the trajectory and go against the robot or modify what the robot has decided to go. Because the robot is planning, is doing his own plan, and the human is doing his own plan. And then both, they have to reach one specific goal, but they can have uh, contradictory plans. And then that is done using this bar and this force that, that is sensing through the bar. Uh, mobile use is says, it's a, yes, it's a bit Monica, OK. Uh, also, if there is any prediction intention model that takes physically force into consideration, yes, we have several papers on that. Uh, we have already. Uh, publish some, and in the next, I think it's going to be in Roman. Uh, now in August, we're going to uh, present 
another new uh, prediction intention model using uh, well different uh, we we use uh, uh, a neural net in order to predict what is the the force that is going to do the human and not only that also we predict the trajectory that is going to happen using that force okay uh, when designing this robot do you study other aspects such as how will then affect the job market yes we have doing also this kind of works okay anna puchpey then is in the local organizer uh, he's, she's working on this kind of uh, uh, works of the trying to see what is going to be the change of the jobs when we introduce robots in the in in our typically task and that is something that is going to change not only is going to create new jobs typically a teleoperator in the avatar case the teleoperator is going to be a human that is going to be is going to probably uh, take the manage could be no one robot several robots at the same time and that is going to be a typical operation of a human but also many of the tasks that is doing at present with humans are going to be doing with robots and humans and they have going to change the jobs and they have to acquire new abilities and we have already several papers on that and in for example in Narso, we published two uh, two papers on this uh, talking about these issues of what is going to change the job market when it's going to happen that okay uh, i think uh, i am on time and i don't know if you have any other yes, Alberto. You don't have, i don't know if you have any other question okay okay thank, anyway, you. thank you very much for your attention and then uh, please enjoy the next uh, anais is going to present his own work